Amen. So John chapter 17, and, and this is just a little recap. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, going over it. it uh, it's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. If you want to watch last week's message. But in, in, in John 17, 17, it says this. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Verse 19, for the sake, for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they themselves also may be sanctified in what? Truth. Verse 20, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their, through their word. Verse 21, that they may all be one even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. Amen? So what, what the sanct... I mean, there, there's a lot of sanctifying going on there, right? What, what does sanctify mean? Real quick, can somebody tell me, what, what, what does it mean to be sanctified? Set apart, thank you. So we're set apart for a purpose, right? We're, 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 God calls us, he, he sanctifies us for a purpose. Now, you know, there, there, there's some people that think that sanctification is the length of your, your skirt or the size of your tie. Or maybe how you, how you did your hair this morning. And, um, but the sanctification it, when you look at this, what, what, Jesus, what Jesus was saying here and what that word said, it, it's, it's set apart, but it's for what? A purpose. And, and what he said was, I don't want you to take them out of the world, but keep them in the world. So why would, why would Jesus want us to be, to stay in this world? Because, I, you know, some of you, I like to, you know, hey, when you say, yes, I give my life to the Lord Jesus and you get baptized, I like to take you out right out here and say, now, you, you know you're going to heaven, right? Now, just, now, let, now, let's go meet our maker. You know, some of us, that way, I know you made it. That was a joke. Don't get, don't get alarmed. I'm not going to take anybody out back. But what, what I'm trying to say is what, is, what is our purpose for being here? To reach out, right? To be in the world, to be a light to those. To, to, he, and and uh, the Apostle Paul told Timothy, he said, you, you're a peculiar people. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a, I might be a little bit more peculiar than you this morning. Amen? That means a little different. You might, you, but, but here's the thing. Here's what happens. In, in, in the title of this message, if I was going to give it a title, I, I would call it the commanded blessing. How many know that this, this country was founded on these Judeo-Christian values and principles. And, and, we're, and we are so blessed in this nation. As I shared last week, you know, there, there's a lot of persecution going on around the world. But yet we freely get to come and we get to tabernacle with one another. We freely, we could put these things on, on Facebook without worrying about the, you know, you know, are, are being shot at or, 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 or disgraced or, you know, we, 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 we have this liberty in Christ in this country. We are truly a blessed people. But how many know that even in being blessed, we got some problems here, right? So, so where in Psalm 133, it says where there's what? Unity that God what? He commands his blessing. We don't have to ask for it. He, com he commands it when we walk in unity. Now, what, what I really want to get at this morning is, and what I want to talk about is the, is us being, you know, because we are a kingdom-minded church. Amen? I'm going to say that again. We're a kingdom-minded church. We're, 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 we're about building the kingdom of God. And as we build his kingdom, he's going to continue to grow this congregation, this church. Because what? He's establishing his kingdom where? Through us. Right? So, 
so here, here's some things that I want us to be aware of that, that go against the, because it, it seems to con- contradict itself the, at times, the Bible. Well, if we're called out of the world, how, do we, how are we in the world? You know, you know there, there's a scripture that says, what fellowship should light have with dark? What, 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 you know, what fellowship should the children of Baal have with the children of Israel? Right? We, we know these scriptures. But when Jesus came on this earth, what, what, what did he do? Who did he attract? He, he attracted the Sadducees, the Pharisees. In fact, the, the day he was born, a wise man came with what? Riches to what? Bless him. Right? The, the, the sinners, the tax collectors, they talked about, I mean, people came from afar to say, to behold this man. And, and then they just, you know, they said, well, isn't this Joseph's son, the carpenter's son? I mean, you know, who does he think he is? But what, it, what is it about Jesus, that attract, and I'm talking about Jesus Christ, God in the form of man, what attracted them to Jesus? Anybody have a, have a guess? Who said the anointing? Raise your hand. And even if, you, even if you know that that's the answer, raise your hand. See, it's the anointing. Jesus Christ is the, Christ is not Jesus' last name. Okay, you know, it's not Jesus, and they were like, well, what are we going to call him? Well, let's call him, you know, Jesus Christ is his last name, and then you got a whole family of, 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 of people with the last name Christ. No, Jesus was, Christ was a description. Jesus, it, you know, so Jesus Christ actually means the anointed one and his anointing. It's the anointing that draws people together. Amen. We have a little bit of, I mean, I think we may be one of the most diverse churches in this area. But what what draws you here? I mean, we could, and it's God, because where he's lifted up, he would draw people. But it's the anointing of God. It's when, you know, know, the second song that Trey sang, that was a song that he wrote. But under what? The anointing of God. You know, that last song when he was singing it, he began to to sing words that were coming to him. That was the anointing of God. You can't manufacture the anointing. The anointing isn't, isn't rolling around on the ground. It's not jumping over pews. Those might be the effects sometimes of the anointing. I've seen those things happen, and it's genuine. But then I've walked in places, and they thought, it was like, well, if we, if we imitate this, then it's going to bring the anointing. Well, that's like, I don't care how much some of you practice golf, you're not going to be Tiger Woods. Amen. Right? Because there, there's, a, there, there's a gifting, there's a, there's a calling, there's a, you know, you know, and we all have a measure of it. But the, what, what is the purpose of the anointing? This is what, this is what people don't understand. What's the purpose of the anointing? It dest- I know what it does. It, it destroys the yoke of bondage. But what's the purpose? Because see, see, we think very spiritually. When I say anointing, our Christianese hat goes off. And you know, bling, 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 you know, we start thinking the anointing is simply it, accomplish it, it accomplishes what needs to be done at the moment that it needs to, be, that it needs to happen. And, and most times the most practical thing that you can do as a Christian, and that word came in, in the book of Acts in chapter 17 because what? They were identified with what? The anointing, Christ. So so sometimes the most practical thing you can do can be the most anointed thing you can do. See, people don't care what you have to say until they know how much you actually care. You know, I, I've seen people, God bless their heart, you know, 
You know, they, 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 they come in and they got their, you know, their big, you know, cross bigger than life on their chest. They got their, their Bible, their highlighter. You know, they even got a briefcase. They may even got a concordance in there. I don't know. And they'll run over three people in the parking lot. They'll knock over two other people to get to their, their assigned, in their mind, seat. And bless God, somebody's sitting in their seat at church. Now, what, what does that have to do with the anointing? But, but yet, you know, hey, you ask them to lead prayer or you ask them to, to do, you know, they get upset because they don't get to, well, the pastor never asked me to do anything spiritual. What's, but, but I'll give you the best example. I was, a, I was part of a ministry and a lady was hired to be the church administrator. Well, that's what they call them now. Back then, they, they just called them secretaries. Okay. She was a church secretary. And she was, um, oh, she was, she was all spiritual. And, and, you know, this pastor friend of mine walks in, and she was, uh, she said, oh, pastor, the anointing's all over me this morning. You know, the anointing's all over me. I can't, I can hardly stand it. You know, John, it's just the anointing. He said, well, praise God. That means you'll be able to get out twice the, double the letters you can. You'll be able to do three times the work you've done but this week. Maybe we'll actually get caught up in this place. Because the anointing is for a purpose. See, when, when, I was, when God called me, first called me into ministry, he didn't, yeah, there was a calling to preach. There was a calling to do what I'm doing now. But the calling came in when I had that toilet brush in one hand and a plunger in the other hand. See, it's embracing your journey. It's not the destination, but it's the character that God is developing, he, that he's developing in you on the way to being where you need to be. It's like the children of Israel before they were able to go into the promised land. He developed it. He developed a people that were ready to go into that promised land. But here's the thing. It, it, it comes with obedience. And, and I think we have a hard time with that word, obedience. We have a hard time with the word submitting. We don't want to submit. That's a, that's a negative. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, no. That, 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 you know, I, you, I'm not, I can't do that. I, I, that's, that's a controlling spirit. No, no, no. It's submitting to God. It's being obedient to his word. So when God told, see, some of us, God has given us a word, right? God told Joshua to do what? March around the walls how many times? Seven. Now, I don't read where Joshua said, well, God, I don't under, no, it shouldn't take seven times, God. We should be able to walk, walk around this wall once and it should fall down. I don't see that in there. What I see is they said, yes, sir. And, and, and Joshua being the leader led the people. They followed the God's person and the wall came tumbling down. But see, some of us, we go on the first, we go on the first lap, but by a second lap, I lo we, lo we lose about half of you. And some of us, we're, we're right there. We're on lap, we're on, we're on the, seven, you know, we're, we're on lap six. And, and we think, man, it's just, I just can't do this anymore. Just say, this isn't working. You, know, you walk around that thing, again, and this wall ain't falling, nothing's happening. But see, it's what you don't see. It's what you don't understand. See, God has a plan. He has a purpose. He has, it's not for us to know everything. It's for us to what? Know him, trust him, believe in him, and then he will work out the details. But what a lot of times what he's building in that time is he's building 
your character. He's building who you are. He's forming who he wants you to be. So you know what? When the wall falls down, you're ready. Some things, you know, at first it's, it, it's emotional. You, know, you can ride the wave of emotion. That'd take you so far. But ain't gonna, it, it might win you a few games, but it ain't going to win you the championship. Amen. See, to win in this game called life, the, the, the real winning isn't, isn't who the president is. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to inform some of you. The real winning is knowing that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is always sitting on the throne no matter what happens. And where to love, so, so to go back to my, my point, there, there are three, I have three real quick points. How many of you give me time to, to hit these points this morning? I know we're, I know some of you are, got to get to uh, Bob Evans in time, and I don't want to, I want to ruin your reservations. So there's three things I want to hit on real quick. Because there seems to be a contradiction. But these are th- three things I want you to be aware of that are happening in our society today. And if you, if you address these, not only in, I'm not even talking big picture. I'm talking about in your home, in your workplace, Facebook, if you will, wherever. I, I, here's three things I want, I want to touch on. The first thing I see that are, that's a hindrance to the commanded blessing is the polarization that's happening. It's polarizing. See, see before, we, you, we can have a difference of opinion, but as Christians and as a Christian brother, as a Christian, we could get together. We may disagree on on the method to get there, but we, we, we stay focused on the end result. Today, man, you can't, if you, if you say one thing, they want to, th- people want to polarize you and put you in a category. And, and what I'm talking about is, I'm talking about the, the church. I'm talking about believers. How, so when Jesus prayed, why did he pray that the world, that they may be one as we're one? Why did he pray that? Because what? There's going to, division was going to try to happen to the house of God. If we turn real quick to Mark chapter, I believe it's Mark chapter, uh, where are we at here? Mark chapter 3, verse 25, it says this. If a house is divided, What? Against itself, that house will not be able to stand. Three calls this this week alone from churches that's heard about what's going on here at Marlin Heights. Hey, can you come help us? Because our church is dying. You know what? You're, You're divided. You're dividing yourself. The minute some of us open up our mouth, you know, you know, it says the house that that prays together stays together because you know what happens when you pray and you get into the presence of God, you begin to gain a different perspective about what's really going on. See, this isn't about red and blue. This isn't about Democrat and Republican. This isn't about Baptist or Catholic. See, see, the minute that we say Catholic, not every priest is molesting boys. Now, those that are should be punished. And those who allowed it to happen, in my opinion, like any other organization, they should be moved out of position. We don't tolerate that anywhere. And no one should be above that law. But here's what I do know. Not every person that is Catholic is evil. What day was it? Uh, Thursday night, they had the ribbon cutting service for the Sycamore Center. And I'm, I'm, you know, and I was privileged to ask to pray and be a part of that, that service. 
four nuns came up to me and said, man, we are praying for you. Now, if, and see, some of you would be like, oh, they're, you know, they're, you know, they're praying to Mary. They're doing this, they're doing that. Man, somebody that's going to dedicate their life to serving God, I'll take their prayer. Amen. Pray for me all day long. I'm not going to judge. I may not agree that they have to go and pray to Mary. I don't have any. I, well, we bought a house off of a Catholic lady, and she, the, the house came with stuff. I don't know. I might have a statue of Mary somewhere in there. I think we, we but I, 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 don't, I don't pray to Mary. I don't pray to the saints. I don't believe that way. But here's what I do believe. They believe like I do, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, that he rose again, and that if I believe in that, that, that I'm saved. See, we look so much at how we're different that we miss where we're alike and there's power and we miss the blessing of the power of unity because of it. Not every black person wearing a Nike hoodie is, is, is going to shoot you. And not every white cop is trigger happy. We have to get out. Has it happened? Does it, do, do these things go on? Sure. I'm not dumb. I'm not trying to say that. I'm not, and, and, and hear this too. I'm not saying to vacate your personal conviction. Right? But what I am saying is, even in your own home, you have to be careful of polarizing yourself, in, even in your own home, over issues. Well, hey, woman, how, how's that working for you? Yeah, is that what, does that work in your household that way? No, no I, don't, I didn't think so. Because when I see Emily on the news, she's smiling. Ed must be doing something right at home. But you, but you understand what I'm trying to say? Or what, what are we doing? Are we going to beat somebody? Are we going to... The, the Bible is a sword. Sorry about that. The Bible is a sword, right? But it's not... Our enemy is not other people. Our enemy is Satan. It, the battle, is the, when we contend for the faith, is yeah, we stand up for what's right as a Christian. But when we contend for the faith, it's against the, the spirit of darkness. And we are to be what? The light. I'm going to get off that. Because I'm going I'm to let that sink in. So I talked, I talked about polarization. The, the second thing I want to talk about is perception. And I started to go there a little bit. We, 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 we quickly try to assess people, and we don't know the information. We don't know all the information. You know, now, as many of you know that attend here regularly, you know, Kate and I, we, we, we have purpose to, you know, to live healthier. You know, and since May, I've lost 40 pounds Amen. by doing that. And I didn't do that for that, but what, 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 I'm going somewhere with that. So yesterday was the World Help event at Weirton Covenant Church, and they had ribs there. Now, I have not had ribs with barbecue sauce. <laughs> Apple dumpling, if you please. I have not had that since before May. But man, yesterday, for the love of God and, and for world help, <laughs> I helped myself to some ribs. Yeah, yeah. No, no. This was not a sharing moment. You got to discern the season, brother. <laughs> K 
Kate's lucky she got a bite, okay? I'm just saying. But what, I, what I'm saying now, if somebody saw that, right? Oh, boy. Pastor Nate looks a little heavier today. He's going to be getting, you know, like, it's the perception. They don't know that because, you know, one of the things we've been doing, we've been walking, right? Well, so I knew, I, I knew this event was coming. I planned ahead. So where I normally get 10,000 steps in a day, which is equivalent of somewhere between four and five miles, I did 20,000 steps yesterday. See, that's what you don't know. I, 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 I plan to do that. And what I'm trying to say is so many times we see people in a state and we really don't understand and we begin to put them in a category and then we end up robbing ourselves from the blessing of God because we begin to do what? Judge other people. And if you start coming to Bible study on Wednesday night, we hit on this a little bit. If we keep our eyes on ourselves and we... And we be everything that, see, I'm not trying, I'm not in a, I'm, unfortunately, I must be a part of competitions I didn't sign up for. Because I got people sending me messenger messages, well, I lost more weight, I lost this much weight. I'm like, I, you know, as if they were competing with me. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing this for them. The only person I'm competing against is me and who God wants me to be. You know, I, I'm not, I don't, when I read the, I'm not thinking about what other, this morning when I got ready, I'm not thinking like, oh man, I wonder what this church over here is going to preach and how can I do, no, no, I'm thinking about, Lord, what is it that you want me to say to the people that you know who will be here this morning? Amen. Following the anointing, following the love of what God is saying and doing. But we have this perception, and, and, when, and so I'm going to give you a real quick definition. Perception is the recognition or appreciation as of moral or psychological qualities, insight, intuition, and discernment. See, perception. See, when, when I was... When I was on the operating table and they were operating on my eyes and I woke up during that surgery, I knew something was wrong. I perceived something was wrong. And what happened is when the doctor was in my eye, he actually ruptured my retina because I woke up and I jerked. Okay? So what happened right after that time is my depth perception was off. But you know what happened during then? Because, you know, I went to the doctors and everything. They said, all of your other senses began to compensate for that lack of depth perception. They're like, we've never seen anyone like you before. I said, yeah, that's a lot of people tell me that. But but here's what with that what, but here's what what I what, what I want you to gather out of that is this. Where you're weak, he's gonna make you strong. Yeah. What you if you pray for somebody, you will begin to understand the love that God has for that individual, and that while he died for you in your sin and in your muck and mire, he also died for them. And sometimes we're just not the ones to be, you know, no matter how much we want to prove our point and how much we, we believe the truth, they ha we're not the Holy Spirit. I don't want the job of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to do the job that the Holy Spirit has, tells me to do. But my prayer is that people get a revelation of who God is so that they can be everything that God called them to be. Amen. Because it said that, because see, division is actually a good thing. It's just when it divides against itself is when it becomes bad. Because that's actually called cancer. 
When a cell divides against itself, it's a cancerous cell, and it has to be what? Cut out. But division is actually a healthy thing because in the first uh, chapter of Genesis, God did nothing but divide, right? He divided the, the light from the dark. He divided the water from the land. He, he divided, he divided, and he saw that all of it was good. We're to grow the kingdom of God. It's okay if somebody in here wants to go plant a church somewhere. Praise God. We'll take up an offering, and whoever wants to go with them, let's go build the kingdom of God. That, that's what we're, that's kingdom-minded. But to keep people in here just for the sake of numbers and for myself, and that person, has, I've seen it happen time and time again. They become a cancer, and then it, instead of it becoming a healthy division, it, the house becomes divided against itself, and then what, what ends up being birth is something that is not God at all. And we ought not to be part of that. Amen? I'm get off that now. My, this is my last point. How many love the Lord? Amen? Amen. I got so many notes here, and I... I, I yeah, when, when, I, when I get ready for this, it's like, I'm like, man, Lord, I don't know what you want me to say. Um, and then I got like 15 minutes to put it all together. So, so the last, so it was, it was um, the polarization. You got to be careful of it. You got to protect that in your, in your own household, in your own community. It is perception. And then the last thing is, is, is we have to look at our perspective. And I'm going to give you a quick definition. The per perspective is the technique of depicting volumes in spatial relationships on a flat surface. Okay? So, so basically, when I stand up here, I, I have a certain perspective. I can see some things a little farther out. You know, I can see some of us have maybe less hairs to count for God than others. But, but my perspective is different. Now, if I, if, I, if I move down here, my perspective begins to, to change. If I sit down in the seat, my perspective definitely changes. And if I sit down and I turn around, I don't, and I'm sitting on the front row, I don't even see you. Right? And so what, what happens is that a lot of times we are in situations and that mountain seems so big. But I want to remind you that you sit with God in heavenly places. And what you need to do, like Joanne did, is something when we're getting frustrated, we're getting is we need to turn to who? Jesus, who is our ever help. Because see, if we get the perspective of God about a situation, a person, that thing doesn't look as big from heaven as it does here on earth. And see, God called you to be an eagle. Stop getting in chicken fights. I'm talking to all of you in here. That especially don't don't, don't get caught. I mean, bless. I'm not saying not to have an opinion. Don't get me wrong. But some of us need to keep that opinion to yourself as a Christian. I'm I'm, I'm saying what what I mean by that is the minute I, the minute we begin to get our eyes off of Jesus, and we get it on, because I know individuals, they love God. There's no doubt they love God. But they get so caught up in things that they begin to make statements that they would never, ever say if it weren't about something either political or racial or whatever. Nobody in here, everybody, every man that's married, stand up. If you're a married man in here, stand up. Now, would any of you let another man force his way 
onto your wife. Absolutely not. Right. Now you can sit down. I didn't think so. Now, if you think, if you if that's okay with you, stay standing. Right? I see some women be like, you better now. <laughs> It wouldn't, it wouldn't be okay. Now, now this is what I'm saying. Now, now, now hear me out here. I'm, I'm, I don't have a dog in this race. But here's what I'm trying to say. I don't, I don't even, I, I, I get so tired of hearing about this stuff. But here's what I'm trying to say. I've heard well-meaning, God-fearing, God-loving people make this statement. Well, I don't care if he did do, if he did if a man did do that, if it was that long ago, it shouldn't matter. Not if it was my daughter. Not if it was my wife. Because why? That's not, it's not, it's not, it's not right according to the Bible. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? We, we have these double standards because we make that statement because we want to win. We want to be right about something. I'm not, and I understand what's going on politically. Don't, I'm not stupid. I lived in the Washington, D.C. area for, for, for two years. And some of the guys that you, you think that you stand up for, you, you're ready to get in fist fights over, they're with, the, with their opponent having dinner and laughing going to the bank. I seen it firsthand. A lot of that stuff is staged. And a lot of it they got to do for the sake of the public, but in private, these guys are best friends. I saw, I, I'm, I'm coming to you telling you I seen it myself with these two eyes. I, I was in restaurants and seen, I see two guys on, on CNN or on Fox News. I'm talking about throat, you know, they're ready to fight. They're having drinks, laughing, toasting each other. Man, we had a good show. Ratings were up. See, if you understand what the real motivation is behind some of that stuff, you have a whole different opinion. So what I'm trying to tell you is in your, in your, how you feel politically, how you feel, however, don't vacate your principles in the kingdom of God. That's all I'm saying. And, and, and there, we got, we have brothers and sisters that are on both sides of that fence but they began to fight each other, and we just read a house divided can't stand. So while, they're, while we're fighting about that 18-year-old in Steubenville shoots a mother and her two-year-old child. Drugs. We have an epidemic of drugs. We have a, we, I, I, this, ain't, this ain't just in downtown Steubenville talking to a family the other day. They don't know what to do. Wealthy family, son, hooked on drugs. Stealing from them. Can't find them in the streets somewhere. Why aren't, we, why aren't we dealing with that? Why aren't we talking about that? Why aren't we having hearings about that? Why aren't we making... Why aren't we making why is it law enforcement and churches and community leaders coming together to fight that? Instead of fighting each other, let's come to, let's come to a solution about that. How many more children have to die? How many more people have to overdose? See, see, there are women right now. This ain't, this ain't a downtown thing. This ain't a poor thing. There are women right now whose husbands are very successful who beat the snot out of them. And they're afraid to say anything. You know why? They, don't want to make, they can't make their husband look bad. The money stops coming in. He loses his job. They're, they're, they're concerned about the wrong things. They need Jesus too. Everybody needs Jesus. Everybody. And, and when we, and, and this is why I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm I, every week I, I get up here and I say this, we have to share our faith because the world needs it. There's people, I mean, and it, it is like Peyton Place out there. 
If you knew half of the things that I heard and seen and, and know about. See, there is not one person in here. If you walked out these doors and there was a person out there with a gaping wound, wouldn't come to their rescue. You call 911, you'd get bandages, you would do whatever you could to keep that person alive. I'm going to tell you right now, there are people, they might, you might not see the wounds on the outside, but they're on their way to hell. And we just go by them. We just get in our cars. That, that girl at the restaurant that's going to get your, thank you, get your, uh, that you're running dog tired, she's getting four something an hour to get your food, and you're giving her the business today, and then you don't leave a tip. She needs Jesus. So I'm challenging you today. Share your faith. We have Bibles in the back with invitations. I don't don't care what, I don't don't, don't care. You you tell me what you want. We'll get it because it's about souls to me. I mean, I don't don't care. Well, I'll I'll bring elephants and giraffes out here in the the light and have them walk around if that's going to draw draw lost souls here. Amen? Amen. So I want to close with this with this last scripture. It's the one that I talked about that I closed with last week. But I felt like it was it's one that we need to hear again. Mark 16, chapter 17 through 18. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will will pick up serpents and they and if they drink any deadly poison it will not harm or hurt them they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover sometimes all it takes is smiling at somebody today it's the anointing Trey shared this at a Bible study and I don't know if you guys heard this but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the story It was a Sunday just like this. Because the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. We we left here at the service. You know, Trey's always here and he closes everything up. And he was listening to a song. And instead of stopping at the gas stations that he normally does, he just kept driving. And he stopped at at a speedway. And there was a lady she was having trouble paying at the pump and he, he thought she actually needed money. And so he offered, he said, well, could, do, do you want me to pay for your gas? She goes, no, no, I have plenty of money. And the attendant came out and he was talking to her and they were, you know, they, they handled that situation with the gas pump. But the lady was clearly and visibly distraught. And Trey just turned to her and said, you know what? Can I pray for you? She began to weep. She began to, she, she hugged him. The older lady began to hug him and, and drenched his shirt with her tears. She said, you know, my niece is in Florida. And I don't know how it happened, but she, she left her, she had her baby in the car and left it in the car and the baby died. And I couldn't be down there to comfort her. I don't even know what's going on. I can't help. She goes, and I stood right here and I told God, God, send me a sign. Send me somebody. And there's Trey in his white T-shirt with a big gold cross on it, praying for her. She said, she kept saying, son, you're an angel. You're an angel. And that's all God's looking for is somebody to make themselves available. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to 
jump up and down. You don't have to let, you don't have to slam somebody on the ground and say, you know, be healed. It just said the, the simple practical things that bring the love of God to a hurt and dying world. And that's what I challenge you to do. They'll, they'll be drawn. They'll be drawn. But sometimes we get so caught up in our own world. What's going on and how we're fighting and all these things, right? And what I'm saying is, man, God's got you. Get his perspective. Get his perception about this, about where you're at. It's, and, and, and God may even have you pray for somebody of a different political party, a different race, or or he might even have you pray for, for, for a nun yourself. I don't know, but he does. And your steps are ordered by the Lord. Amen. I know he didn't ask, but I'm going to have, Ed, if you wouldn't mind coming up and closing us out.